Welcome back to Practical 365. I am Steve Goodman. In the first two parts of this series on deploying IoT with Microsoft Teams and the Power Platform, we learn why we'd do this, how we'd do this, conceptually what were our options. Now we're going to get physical and do the hardware side of it before the last part of the series where we go straight into Teams and the Dataverse. So our model is going to be IoT Central. We're going to use a dev board to do this because that's going to be reasonably representative, maybe even harder than using off the shelf devices that we'll buy and then plug in when we deploy this much more widely. But it's going to give us the basics and we're going to fit into that exact model where we've got our Intune equivalent with device provisioning service and we've got that hub where the data comes in securely. So we're going to follow the right models to get the data in in the first place. That's the important thing. So to start, what we need to do is create a new IoT Central app. To get started, we're going to use IoT Central and we're going to log in using the same credentials we use for our Microsoft 365 tenant. So my dev tenant admin credentials I'm using here to create the app. That's going to make it very straightforward for me to link this over to Microsoft Teams Power Automate Dataverse in the next video. So that's important. Now our app, we can call it what we want. We'll give it a URL as well. That URL is what will define how it is accessed, the portal that we go to to manage it. You can have several of these. So the Azure portal will have the links to IoT Central applications. You log into the IoT Central application. That's where you can either view the data, you can view the dashboards, and it's also where we'll be able to configure the devices, configure our rules, configure the destinations for the data. And we'll use a standard plan two version of this because for the number of devices we want to test with, then that will be free. It won't cost us any money. We don't need to just st stay on a, a free plan to test it. It gives us enough for setting data every few moments across, and then we can do something with that. Now, once that's provisioned, we're going to then go and create a device and a device template. So a device template is the definition of what that looks like. We're going to be using a blank template and that's going to then use the IoT dev kit. So I've used the MX chip IoT dev kit that works with Azure. And if you've got that yourself, then what we're going to do is download the instructions and the code sample for that from aka.ms forward slash IoT hyphen dev kit. It's basically a device that is small, costs less than $50, but allows us to test all sorts of different scenarios and it might be great for somebody developing their own solution that you're going to buy off the shelf. But it's also good for us if we don't want to have a whole load of these devices shipped so we can test and see which one's right and see what the scenarios are going to be for us. We can get the data in quickly and we can do things with it and we can focus more on those business processes. And then when we've picked the right scenarios, then we can go and pick and test our devices afterwards. It makes a lot of sense. But there is a little bit of work to do to get that code in to make it work. So we're going to add our first device. Now, we're not going to assign anything to it yet. We'll give it a name that makes sense to us. But this will be the actual device that we deploy. So when we do this, this is not going to be a simulated device. We could simulate a device, and I'll do that later on to bring in loads of data feeds. But fundamentally, what I want to do is I want to get my device in, and I want to get the codes from it so I can connect it. And I'm going to use a shared access signature, a SAS key. I could use other methods like uh, certificate-based authentication, but I'm going to get particular data from here. I'm going to get the primary key from this, and I'm going to get the ID scope from this, and then I'm going to take those, and then I'm going to put that into the code sample, which would be the equivalent of what will be the configuration page or utility when I buy a physical device, because that's going to allow me to make the code, make the firmware that I'm going to deploy to my test device. To do this, I need VS Code. I've got that code sample downloaded. I open it up. VS Code does have all the add-ins available from Microsoft for doing this. So we can add those quite quickly so it knows what we're doing effectively. And we can really sort of build on that. We've got all those IntelliSense samples and so on. Now, we're going to go and edit a header file. And this code sample has folder for our chip, MX chip. Under that, we're going to go in to a folder that gives us access to exactly what we need, which is going to be a Azure config header file for the app. 
This header file is a it is part of the thing that's going to get compiled in C. It's not scary though because what we're doing is we're putting some constants in, uh, effectively you know, variables, almost like configuring a PowerShell script to run, uh, so it can connect to our IoT access point. Um, obviously, there's a variety of methods you can use to do this, and then we're going to grab the details from IoT Central and paste those in as well, that ID scope and then the SAS code that's going to connect the two across. Simple, we've just had to change, in this case, four things to bring that in. And I've set up an access point, um, So, well, I've set up an APN, an SSID, that can then be used to bring this in separate from the rest of my, my wireless network, which is obviously, you know, what you'll see if you walk around a, a supermarket, you'll see people doing that already today. So it's a common model for keeping these devices partitioned from others on the network. Now, once we actually get started with this and build it, you'll see I've got the, the device connected via the USB cable into the PC. You can see it's, it's something that is made for makers. You could make stuff with it to test things out. This is something where you can then go and explore all the possibilities with. But to start with, we just want to use those code samples to do something very straightforward. We're not going to get it to go and control our air conditioning or, or something like that at the moment. Now, the code samples are easy to build. It has a batch script that we run to build the tool set. So it downloads the CMake utility and bits that sit around that to compile it for the CPU on the device itself. And then we compile it. That compiles it using the code that's already there that header file that's going to define how it connects to our environment, its makeup of who it is, who the device is. And then once we've done that, it's very easy to get the data uh, for that firmware file over. We don't have to install a specific chipset manufacturer's utility or tool set to get it across. Microsoft for the dev kit have made it quite easy in that they have made it present itself as a disk drive. So the disk drive great thing about that disk drive is we just copy the file over the firmware file and it programs it so as you can see that's programmed that chip with our special code and once that's done i reset the device once i've reset the device one of the things that the batch script that installs our bits to, to set this up our comp compilation utilities it does give us a tool that allows us to check that this thing is working so we can see it's not just flashing lights. So we know that it's actually going to register if it can connect to the access point. It's actually alive, right? So we'll launch this tool, Termite. We'll set the settings as defined in Microsoft Docs. So that'll be setting the right board rate for the COM port that's showing up. Uh, if you haven't got many of those, which many people don't, then in, in this case, it's the only COM port I've got available. And that, once I press the reset button on the device, it's going to launch and it's going to show the telemetry data that's there and what's being sent to Azure. So I know that the device is registered. It's sending its data over to the cloud. Simple, right? And when I go and have a look inside IoT Central, there it is. The data is already coming through. And we can see that graph straight away. This is what makes IoT Central really easy for you to use because you don't need to understand how to then subscribe to the data, pull the data, and then eventually see a log file that then you might go, oh, it's there. We can see straight away, it's there. And we're only a few steps away from getting it into Microsoft Teams. How good is that? So stay tuned for the next video where we do that.